oops, so I pressed a button, didn't mean to press. So I'm back to the fairy tales book. Here we are. We are at this point, and I'm just going to keep going. Okay. All right. So back to where we were. So far I talked about collation and um, separating the text block and the cover. And now I'm just cleaning up bits of the cover. I'm going to use my regular knife. So I don't know if any of you saw my post. I'm actually looking for someone to work with who might like to learn book restoration in exchange for helping me edit my iMovies, um, all about book restoration and repair. Um, and I thought that I was going to have to have them live in Ashland to come to my studio and help me, but um, it's I think it's possible. If you know anything about iMovies... Uh, and can, you know, are interested in book repair, that you know, maybe you don't need to live here. Maybe we can work it out long distance. I don't know. Anyway, contact me through my website at saveyourbooks.com, and we'll see what we can do. Now, don't forget to share this video on your Facebook page if it's interesting at all, which, you know, I know it's a little bit like watching paint dry, so uh, it's for the book people who really want to learn this, it could be interesting. I would hope so. All right, looks like I missed a little bit of the mull there. I'm just going to get all the mull out of there. I'm making the, the cut of this paper with an angle so that it'll just look nice later, you know, so that it'll blend in when I put a new piece over it. Um, all right, got rid of all that tape. it up a little bit. I've got my 100 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to make a clean line here and clean off all the edges. Same thing with this one. Oh, um, if I were going to be saving the spine and here's this, you know, kind of free-floating piece. I would get a piece of paper. And going from the tail end of the book, I would make a note of where the piece was located. So, for instance, here are these three lines. write down what it is in case you're not sure what you just did. This will be the tail end of the book. We call it the head and the tail rather than the bottom or the foot, although those are, you know, indeed accurate as well. So here we go. So then then I would just keep this around um, as, a, as a note with the collation notes. But I'm really not going to be saving this. There's, there's no point. Everything else is gone. So this... going with the cutting. And 
And then further cutting. Well, let's see. What do I really want to do? Get the bug off of there. Scrape that off. What else have we got here? Hmm. I'm actually thinking about cleaning this before I do any further kind of deconstruction. I don't think it's very important. The price anymore. Just going to get those off of there. Um, this is actually starting to, uh, you know, the acidity of the paper is starting to deteriorate the paper. And that may make it hard to attach a new piece of paper, a new flyleaf, or not flyleaf, and paste down and for the, the end sheet. So unless you're going to remove the entire page, um, just sometimes just trimming off these edges, especially if they're really acidic, could be a good idea. And then you don't have to be as worried about the end sheet that you're going to be replacing it with fitting really perfectly. Because you're definitely not going to want this sticking out from underneath. I'm trying not to cut the book cloth, of course. This knife I'm using is just the um, prototype or, you know, the original of the book repair knife that I sell on my website. That looks like this. So I could be using this one just as easily. So instead of doing the other board, um, I'm going to move along and I'll do the other board in between now and tomorrow, and then you'll be able to see that better. So that was the front board. So I have to determine whether or not this front cover needs any cleaning. Um, it's got some bubbling a little bit, which indicates that the old animal glue or paste, probably animal glue, is releasing. And so there's a little bit of bubbling going on. And I don't think I'm going to do anything about that much. And I could spend time and like dry clean the cover and all that. Um, I think instead of that, I'm actually just going to use a damp paper towel. Um, just It just feels kind of dirty. So I'm just going to clean it a little bit with this paper towel. You, you could squeeze this and no moisture would come out. It's just damp. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, here's a learning experience. That took off a lot of color as well as dirt. And it removed some of the black. And eh, maybe not any of the gold, but maybe. It certainly moved color on top of the gold, which is not helpful. So, Wow, what a great learning experience. This is exactly the reason why I'm working on these books for you guys to see. Uh, you need to be able to see how to recover from mistakes when they happen. 
And this is one of those things, boy, if this were, if this were a real client's book, I might have been a lot more cautious here about what I was doing, and I probably would have stuck to dry cleaning. It's a really good point. So when in doubt, you would, you would have checked this first to see if it was going to move color a lot. Um, so in any case, but here we are with this. I think that it looks, you know, okay still, but definitely some of this, the black on here is, is missing. Um, kind of, it's lightened up a bit. And I don't know about that T. I feel like that T got kind of either there's stuff covering it or maybe the gold is missing as well. So that, wow, you guys are so lucky. That hardly ever happens, making a mistake like that. So, and I, there was like a piece of paint right there, so I thought I would just scrape that off while I'm at it, getting everything gone. All right, so this is what we're at, and one of the ways to recover from something like this, if you have a precious book, is to get um, an archival pen. This is a Prismacolor one, and this one is the point oh five, yeah, point oh or oh five, and this is the O O five. And I'm just gonna show you. Let's see how can I the different tips. So here's the O O five, and here's the O five. Hopefully it'll work. And so you can, if you're like going, oh my god, I did this thing and it's erased this bit that I can't live without, um, you can go back in and just kind of, you know, put that back in there. So I just, you know, did little dots. It's, you can just draw, but I don't find that that is the most effective way to have it look good. Um, let's say, let's see that, let's say that the, uh, the rabbit here was super important. So, let's see, here we go. I'm actually going to get my close-up glasses. If you don't have any, if you don't, I mean, if you can see that, and it, that all works out, that's great. But I have I have glasses that are for close up work. So the ink comes out and it's it's actually a little wet. The way I like to think about this is that I'm I'm filling in the the dots of the the cloth. The of the, the grain or the weave of the cloth. I'm like just putting things back in. If you start scribbling or um, trying to draw straight lines, it looks like you drew on your book. Whereas if you just do this tiny kind of pointillism, pointillisme, you can get a better effect. And I'm not going to take forever on this, but I just wanted to show you kind of, you know, what I would do. This is what I would do. And I would, I would take as long as it took to, you know, make this look better and back to, back to where it was. Um, the straight line thing is one of the keys to making a book look, you know, cleaner, brighter, neater. So I would take some time and get the lines to look straighter, more filled in. Especially if there's an actual gap. I know. 
this is so boring. Sorry, paint drying. Well, I could take hours on this. Okay, um, in any case, you can kind of see where am I? See where I'm going with this. And it could, you know, you could do that to the whole cover, you know, do things like that. Um, as for the gold, I do have some uh, gold leaf, uh, shell gold, as it, um, it's called shell gold, and uh, paintbrush, and I'll show you that real quick. All right, so shell gold. All right, so this is real, like, I don't know, 20-something carat gold. And I'll just spritz it just a little. And get my little paintbrush. It's a liner paintbrush. Really long, skinny brush. And that's what I would use to fix the T here. Sometimes I hold my breath when I'm doing this. <laughs> it's like just trying to get it just in the lines. Okay, and then if it gets um, out of the lines or whatever, you can get a, what are these called? Orange sticks or cuticle pusher sticks. And um, before I use one, I would clean it off with sanding it. <laughs> And get a little bit of a point on it. All right, and then I suck on it, and then I would use that to remove any gold I put in the wrong place. And there wasn't much, but there are just some tiny little things. <sighs> okay, I think that looks better. And I'm not going to do any more to that right now, but I'll set that aside. Anyway, this is the shell gold. It's really expensive to buy any of this, but once you have it, you can touch up gilt. Although sometimes it's not the right color. You should know that. And then you can mix it with things, but it's just something something to realize. It doesn't always match. Okay. Well, that was exciting. All right. And as long as we're at it, I may as well show you what the, the thicker pen would look like. And especially like if we were drawing with it. So I'll just I'll do some fill in here. Here we go. Like, what if I did just draw? What does that look like? Sometimes it works great. You can see kind of what I'm doing here. I mean, first of all, it's it can be hard to keep up with it, so you might want to get a slip of, you know, chipboard or something so that you can line it up with it and run it up against it. But then you have to be careful because the ink can slip underneath sometimes. So there's all kinds of things to just be careful about. So especially the places where, like right here, there's a little spot where there's white. So I'm just lining this up, putting that up against it, nice and straight. Same thing right below it. Actually, that's looking pretty good. It's 
So in any case, you can see like either one of these pens would work just fine. And just be aware that like I just touched that up with the pen and it's still wet. So if I go like that, I'm going to get the little ink on my finger. Clean that off. Okay, wow. You guys are so lucky. <laughs> Not every day you get to see book binding, book restoration mistakes live. <laughs> All right, there we go. That's that's that. And we, oh, there's some people. Just noticed there's notes. Hello. And it happened live. Yes. When you uh, thank you, Travis. Oh my God, so great to see somebody here. I appreciate that. Awesome. All right, well, that's, that is the whole, the whole point of all of these live things is to see mistakes. Well, it's not to see mistakes. It's to see how to do it. But mistakes do happen, and, you know, I'm confident I can fix them all, or, you know, almost all of them. There are some mistakes there are, there's no recovery from. Um, things like staining your book page with ink. You're, you're not going to get out of that one. That's, that's one you're not going to recover from, or certainly not easily. All right. Okay, moving on to just kind of preparing this board and the, and the other board, I'm going to remove a sixteenth of an inch from the edge. And I did this on this the last live video I did, so this should be familiar. And, oh, well, I guess you should theoretically do this on a cutting mat. I actually have a cutting mat under the paper, so I'm not showing the cutting mat. Okay. That's all we need to do. And then, um, as to where to cut the this so that you can lift the flap of the top thing. There's some different schools of thought. One is you could actually just make a cut here and lift that. And lift that whole bit. And then so the flap will come back down and then get turned over. So it's it is it is a nice way to do it. So it's just, it's not always available as an option, but it is today, so let's just go ahead and do that one. Make sure I'm in the camera. And you have to cut along the top as well, otherwise it'll, it'll tear anyway, so kind of have to go there. Let's see. Oh, time's going by so fast. There, I'm just scraping the excess cardboard. Alright, so that's all fine. Then, this was just coming up anyway. I don't even need to like get my knife in there because it's just... It's just peeled up. Um, for a more expensive book, for a, a deeper, I don't know what you call it, a more extensive restoration, I would uh, take this and I would actually try to get some of this board up. Um, I did th that on the last Wizard of Oz restoration I did, which came out very nicely. And the reason you do that is because when you put your new cloth, pretend this is cloth, underneath here, um, when it's just under the cloth, you can actually feel the lump pretty pretty clearly right there. But if you've got a bit of cardboard, a layer, um, underneath there, then... But you have to get it at an angle. It's a, it's a tricky thing. Anyway, this is going to be just absolutely fine for what we're doing here. I think I'm going to be doing a muslin new spine with a... Uh, Japanese tissue uh, label for the the new label that will actually say what this is. So that's it. So this that's it for this cover. 
I could be doing the you know corner repair I, I have other videos showing you corner repairs so I'm gonna skip that for now and I'm actually going to move back to the text block now because what I can do is in between now and tomorrow I'm gonna catch this board up um, so that's you know caught up to this I might do the corners we'll see and then we'll get back to let's get back to this thing for now that's just how we go we kind of go back and forth um, between the text block and the cover oh my gosh so what I decided to do for the pages that are missing is I'm going to put um, I'm going to put tabs in to save a place in case I find these pages somewhere or find another copy of the book that's in terrible shape um, that maybe it's missing the back pages so I can put them together uh, but meanwhile I'm, I'm just what I'm doing is I'm actually typing out the text from a different copy of the book that I found it the story is not e exactly the same I mean it's the same story it's the tinderbox but I looked through the whole story and I got to the point where it comes up to here and so I'm just typing it out I'm going to print it up so that it's just on both sides of the page it's just to have the actual story be complete I'm not worried about this being accurate or a facsimile or anything it's just gonna hold the space for it so you could actually read the story that's all we're gonna do for this book um, but I am going to you know print that up and and have it just attached to tabs so that they could be taken out again later no big deal all right meanwhile what do we do with this page what in the world because this page the tape this tape is not going to come off really easily, I believe. It's also got, you can see the line, the brown line of the um, acidity. And so, uh, it's just this question. Well, it wouldn't hurt to throw it in a bucket of water and find out if it'll come off. Because, you know, maybe it just floats off and then that's gone. So, I will... I'll show you how that works, but I won't actually do it now because I don't have the hot water, which is what you need. All right, so I just have this tray. It's like a photo tray, enameled tray. So what I'll do is I'll um, put water in, like, you know, an inch of water. Uh, well, first I'll clean it out. I actually have a little spider crawling around in here. So clean it out put the water in it should be quite warm not so hot you can't stick your hand in it but you know that you kind of go oh that's quite warm and then you would put this in and just see what happens and you leave it in for at least I don't know maybe a half an hour or so and by that time you should be able to see whether or not this tape will easily release so I'll do a I'll do a separate video of that just so you can see what happens with it. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, get back to this part, and oh, I guess same thing for these this rear page maybe. Ugh, yikes. Okay, well, there's no actual tape on there. It's really just this old stuff. But I might be able to get that kind of cleaner if I wash it. So I might just wash this page. Um, one thing I'm noting before I'm washing these pages and separating them from the text block is that this is page 466. It's in sequence, so I don't need to worry about it. I'll be able to find where it goes later. Sometimes you're washing a page or you know taking it and t removing it from the book to do a procedure on it and it doesn't have a number. You, you don't know where it comes in, in the sequence. So you really want to make sure that you would take a pencil and write down on the page somewhere. Like in this case, I might write right here. Because it's clean, it'll be easy to erase later. If I write it right near the edge, then I'm erasing right next to the edge, and that can, yeah, can be hard to do sometimes. So just write very lightly in the middle of a page or you know where it's blank so for here I might might have written a note right there if there were no numbers on it okay so I will also set this aside we will see what that looks like I'll do that one. Oh, and these huh these are all stuck together 
And if I'm lucky, this has been done with some kind of um, water-based adhesive once again, and those could just float apart. So I'm also going to wash these, so I'll throw that in the bucket. And now we're, we're down to kind of what's left. And there is some page repair to be done, but before I do it, it's act I've, mm, well, it's six of one. You could go through, because this is still attached and it's, it's fairly secure, like the pages aren't like just falling out. Um, you could do the page repair now. Well, I guess, hmm, it's a good question. So like for instance right here, this is a, a really good example of why you might want to do this now. Because if I remove all of the liner lining, which I need to do, I need to get all this old stuff off and put new stuff on, the book might be so tight after I do that, even if I just do the mull, which is what I would do, I would just line it with glue and mull, and then I might not be able to find this page or access it as, as easily. Eh, but I might. I might. It's six of one. So it's kind of this question. Do I repair this first and then do all of this, or do I remove this, put the new, basically just glue and the mull, this webbing stuff, and then do the page repair. And... I just get kind of caught up in that. It depends. As I said, there's no signatures coming out, so it's it's really either way. I think because of where we're at with time, that I'll just do a little bit of this page repair right here. Ugh, my glasses. All right. So what we've got, and once again, every time I remove a page from the situation of the text block, I'm, I just make a note. Oh, sorry, not in the scene. Come back. 32, 33. I don't need to worry about making a making a pencil mark, noting where it is. One of the things I'm noticing for the page repair here is that there's a lot of um, uh, residue from the glue that was used to attach this page. Not originally. Somebody added this paste or whatever it is. Um... And so it'd be really good for me to remove that from the pages because it's, um, well, it might interfere with the new attachment that I'm going to make. Plus, it's just ugly. So that's good, too. It's going to be able to, uh, removing this is going to let me make a much neater repair. That's better. And there's nothing on that side. So now I can actually repair that. I'm also going to remove all of that, but that's boring to watch. You don't need to watch that as well. I'm just going to mark that page just to kind of keep that all safe. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the, the tear and seeing which way the scarf edges are going. And it's actually going, so this part is under, up until about there, and then this part needs to go over this part. So it actually goes like 
that. And this one, I believe it's all just on one side. So this part needs to go on top of that. And that is that is the first thing to do is to just make that attempt. Here's my giant shadow tracer that I have. This is in the page repair kit, only it's a little smaller to fit in the kit. Um, got my paste. This is the Nori paste. And I just want to, well, I am not cleaning this first. You can see that. And that is an option is to do some sort of cleaning before you would do this. Because this is plastic, it's like the the paste is just kind of squooshing out onto it a little bit on the back. Not a lot. Um, there we go. Let's dry that up a little bit. All right. So that's gotten the paste in between, and now I just want to add a little hinging tissue. Here's this little bit of hinging tissue, and just paste that out. It's kind of just helping to dry it with that paper towel. It's funny, I don't think I would have ever mentioned that I might do that occasionally in any, like if I was writing up how to do page repair, I don't think I would say, and then blot it dry with paper towel. But now I might, because I actually figured that out. So, and then same thing with the other one. And I'm just double checking the the scarf tear, the you know the beveled edge of the tear. Okay. And same thing. Do that same blotting thing. Alright, that's good. Now I'm just leaving these little tail ends on there. I'm going to wait till it dries and then clip them off. Um, if you clip them off when they're wet, they tend to tear and move away from the repair you were just making. And I could uh, put wax paper on here, you know, and just let this sit under some weight. I could um, use a hair dryer, not with the wax paper because you will get wax on your book, which is bad. Um, but just kind of, you know, do the hair dryer, dry it off, and then clip it. Or just, uh, I don't know, there's a, there's a lot of ways to do it. See my blog post about page repair. And so there we go. And I'm, I'm not really worried about the the edge more than that because it needs to get, you know, just glued back into where it was. I think I will use a hair dryer just for a second. Those are 
not good scissors. Where are my good scissors? Oh, there's some. Okay. Now, oh man, I just want to tip it back in, but there's all that stuff there still. It drives me crazy. Oh, what kind of tissue? Okay, so the tissue. This is, um, it's like a kizakishi, but it's actually the hinging tissue sold at Talus. It's just called hinging tissue. There's also, there's several other kinds of, of tissue like that. And I'll also, I'll write that down on the thing when I'm there. On the, I'll post about it. I will. I have to start learning the, the weights of tissue. You know, if it was really hard to get all this little, um, you know, schmutz off of here, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. I would probably just leave it, but it wants to come off, and so I'll get it off. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And there's, there's hinging tissue in the repair kit that I sell. There's hinging tissue and sakishu and also Kozo Cashmere, which is a really, really thin tissue. The, uh, the Kozo, I mean, this is really quite see-through. Like, you can, you can see through that. But the Kozo is, like, even thinner. Let me give you, give you an example of that. So there's the Kozo, and so that's in the page repair kit. This is the hinging tissue, and they're, they're very similar. You can see through both of them, but this is way, 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 way easier. So that's, that's why it's in the page repair kit, is because it's perfect for going over when you have to go over text or an illustration. I mean, you never want to do that, but sometimes you just have to. And it's, you know, it's a sheet so you could get the whole thing if you need to. All right. Oh boy, we've only got five minutes left. Well, one thing I want to talk about is when I come back tomorrow, I'm going to um, be ready to, I'll, well, okay. Mm, yeah, we're gonna have to work on this next time and get this stuff off and do the lining and all that. Um, hopefully next time I'll, I'll put together the the pages that are missing and have that ready to go. This is going to get tipped in um, and then I'll show you what I'm thinking for the um, the spine, the new spine. Actually, I'm come back up here. Hello. Oh, Jennifer and Robert, yay, hi. All right, so what I'm thinking for this, uh, here's, so here's the cover, and um, I'm going to use muslin that'll be colored, or I could use the Japanese tissue that, um, you know, I found that's fairly close. Uh, but I would probably put that over muslin. So this is a big enough book. I'm not going to want just Japanese tissue. It's it's too heavy for just one sheet. Even two sheets. I'm really thinking the muslin is going to be the way to go. So muslin and then tissue could be the coloring or paint it and then whatever. It gets a little confusing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on as the label. And I just wanted to show you kind of how I did this in my computer. So I, I just figured this out. I mean, this is just on pages. You can do this on any any program. You just center it on the page, do a, a, a box thing, and that's only so you get the lines. I You can do lines other ways, but I just like to do a box of it. And then I, I did, you know, dots. And the, the trick is, is like between every line, you actually have to put another space. So hands, space, Christian, space, Anderson, space, 
you know, the tilde, space, fairy, space, tails. And, and that way you can control kind of the, the kerning of the lines or the, the lead, the leading um, of where it all goes. And so this was my first attempt. And then my second attempt, uh, it looks very similar, but like I just, I held it up to the book, like just around the spine, kind of like this, just to make sure it would fit. I just, you know, I know what my font sizes are, so I had a pretty good idea. And then I made some very slight adjustments. And then I did it again, some more very slight adjustments. And then I just ran this. And this is some uh, different kind of Japanese tissue, uh, the Mariki style. Uh, they're not making Mariki. It's like a hanji. Anyway, um, so ran this through my, my printer. It actually worked. It didn't get caught up. I was really worried, actually. But it's just thick enough. It actually it held through. And so then I'm, I'll, I'll trim it down later after everything's done and we'll wind up putting that on the book. And I just, you know, I, I was kind of like, how else am I going to get a, a label on this book? I could stamp it, but I'm, I'm trying to, you know, have these videos be for people who don't have all the special equipment. So every, almost everybody has access to a printer. And so this is a really easy way to just make a pretty nice looking label. And so this is what's going to wind up being the label on the book when it's done. And, um, oh, I haven't done this yet, but I'm going to spray this with a fixative um, so it doesn't, you know, rub off easily. And then probably over the whole book we'll do a Mylar cover. Anyway, it is 12 o'clock. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, don't forget to share this and tell your friends. Come back tomorrow at 11. See how much I've finished on my own and um, we're d definitely not going to finish it tomorrow but it's going to be much further ahead and uh, hopefully the next time we'll get it all done so thanks so much